whatever you do, don't do this. Don't use neural filters to change eye direction because if you do that by moving the eye direction slider, this is what you get. If you want this fantastic result, go ahead and use this method. So easy, isn't it? The design is very human. Look at how beautiful the eye is. Let's move it to the other side. Boom! How nice! Hi there, this is Unmesh from Piximperfect and today I'm going to share with you how to make the subject look straight into the camera. I have an easy example for you where in a group setting someone can look away from the camera accidentally at the moment of the click or maybe a detailed example where you want the eye position to change after the fact. So without any further ado, let's get started. Back in the magical world of Photoshop and here with the first example, it's me with the Adobe team and everybody is looking to the camera except me. So how do we fix that? Now here we do have an advantage that this is not a close up. So when we zoom in, there is a lot of pixels, which makes it very easy for us. We don't need to work on the details. So here's an easy fix. Select the lasso tool right here and then you want to make a selection of the eyeballs like this. Leave a little gap. Do the same with this one. Hold the shift key to turn it into lasso plus so you can add more areas into the selection just like this. Now place it in a new layer by pressing Control or Command J. Now in this new layer, if you hold the Alt key or the Option key and click on it, we just have that. Now press Control or Command T and move it to the right possibly. Do you think this one would be enough? Yeah, that's enough. And if you zoom out, can you really tell? <laughs> no. So here is the before and here is the after. Now there is one problem with that. Right here, it doesn't look right. So how do we fix that? Take the brush, as simple as that. By the way, you want to pick this color and paint right here. Just paint. But before we do paint, you want to make sure that you select the eyedropper tool and you choose sample size as point sample. Usually we select 3 by 3 average, but in this case it is so low of a resolution that we want the control to sample a color from one pixel. So you want to make sure it is point sample. All layers is fine. Take back the brush and let's sample this color. All right. Decrease the flow to about 20% and then start painting right here. Just a little bit so that it doesn't look bad. There you go. So when you zoom out, you see that white area there and it's pretty much fixed. At this point, I recommend that you just take the eraser tool and erase the extras that moved. For example, this area and this area. So first of all, let's slowly and gradually erase this area. There we go. That's nice. And maybe from the bottom just a little bit. Okay. It is fixed. And if you zoom out this much, you really cannot tell. So here is the before and here is the after. Such an easy fix. When you have an image like this and you want the eyeballs straight onto the camera, it gets a bit more challenging. Here's how to do it. The process is the same. Select the lasso tool right here and let us select the eyeballs and give it a little bit of space so that we can work with it. Something like this would be fine. Similarly, let's add this one as well. Hold the shift key and add this as a selection just like so. There you go. Now let's place it on a new layer. With the selection active, press Ctrl or Command J. Now this layer just has the eyeballs. All right. Now press Ctrl or Command T for transform and with the arrow keys, move it. I feel that this would be apt. What do you think? All right. That looks nice. Hit enter or return. And by the way, you can move the eyeballs, let's say this doesn't look right to you, you can select it, press Ctrl or Command T and move this thing right here. That's up to you. Do not forget to press Ctrl or Command D to deselect. Let's work on this eye first. The secret to good result here is good masking. So let's click on the mask button. Don't forget black hides and white shows. Let's take the brush with black as the foreground color. You can always press X to toggle between the foreground and the background. Make sure you choose a soft round brush like this one. Increase the flow to about 100% and then just erase the edges. Just like that. The point is, do the best you can with masking. Don't worry about getting it perfect. Just do the best you can. Now, if you erased extra by mistake, you can always press X again to turn the foreground color to white and paint that back in. Now this my friend is the best we could do. Let's forget about it for now. Let's move to the other eye. Similarly, do the best you can with masking. 
Let's set the foreground color to black and erase the extras. So anyway, this is the best we could do with this eye. Now the next step is fixing all of those problematic areas like this and this. And how do we do that? There are a couple of approaches. You can try using the remove tool, you can try using the clone stamp tool, and a combination of a lot of those. Or if you're using the latest versions of Photoshop and you're not using a Captain Jack Sparrow version, I recommend using generative fill in this case. It's a pretty good use case right here. So select the lasso tool right here and just make a selection of the problematic area. Just that only. Don't do it for both of the eyes at once because we are worried about resolution as well. So like this should be fine. Now the generator fill button doesn't show up. You want to make sure you go to window, come down and this one should be checked. Contextual taskbar. Let's bring it right here. Click on generator fill and we don't want to type in anything, you can try typing in I if it doesn't give you good results. Let's see what it does. And just at the first try, this is pretty good. So here's one, two, and three. They are not bad. Maybe I'm gonna go with this one. But again, this creates this dark patch right here. So let's try something there again. Generate a fill again, click on generate. And there you go. It fixes that. You have a couple of options here. Maybe I'm gonna go with this one. And if you zoom out, this one is fixed. So let's take a look. Here's the before and here is the after. I might make the eyeball a bit larger and there are some other areas I might want to fix. Possibly let's select something like this. Let's try one more time. I guess this is better. So there you go. This eye is taken care of. Now there's one more essential step after this. Not everything is generative fill, but before it, let us do the left eye. Let's make a selection and click on generative fill. Generate. And this one, possibly just at one go, fixes a lot of things. So this is weird. Maybe we can go with this one. But even in here, this stop area looks bad. So we'll try again here. And there you go. You have some better results. So maybe I'm gonna go with this. Okay, now it is not over yet. If you want better results, there are a couple of corrections we still need to do. Let us create a brand new layer at the top and let's name it Final Corrections. For it, let us choose the Remove tool and you want to ensure that Sample All Layers is checked. Now let's zoom in. I feel that there's a lot of gap right here. So let's paint here, see what the Remove tool does. And right now, Remove after each stroke is unchecked. So we need to check it here. And let's check it so that we have faster results. There you go. That is a bit better. Also, here's a line. Let's correct that. That is gone. And anywhere where you see a discrepancy, you can easily fix that with the remove tool. Like this. There you go. Few things here and there. Similarly, right here as well, there's this weird thing. Let's fix that. There you go. Easily fixed. I feel that there should be less gap right here. So let's try painting there. It's better. And there you have the overall result. Let's take a look at the before and after. And there might be some mistakes we need to fix. So here's the before. And here is the after. The eyes in the before were a bit fuller and they have gone a bit thinner. I think it has to do with the masking right here. So select the mask and maybe we need to paint back a little bit of the eyeballs. We erased mistakenly. So with white as the foreground color, let's get back some of it like this. There you go. Similarly right here, let's get back some of this. Keep it smooth and simple. There you go. Nice. Okay, now this is looking fantastic. And if you want more perfection, you can also modify the eyeballs in Liquify. And I did that a little bit. So here is the overall before and here is the after. So that is how to make the subject look straight into the camera. The idea is simple. Just select the eyeballs, move it and cover up your mistakes using several techniques. When you have a simple portrait in a group photo with not a lot of details and it's very pixely, you can just use the brush tool to paint in those areas. When you have a little bit more details where the brush tool won't work, you can use some advanced tools like the remove tool, the clone stamp tool, generative fill, whatever you like. Just a quick reminder, I'm doing a two day full day complete Photoshop workshop in Colorado Springs with the first day focusing on the basics and the second day focusing on more advanced techniques for photographers like color grading, 
retouching and compositing. If you are interested, you can check the passes in the description. I hope this video helped you and if it did, make sure to give us a like and also don't forget to subscribe and not just subscribe. Ring the bell so that you my friend don't miss any other future tips, tricks or tutorials. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in my next one. Until then, stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating. We're up here on cloud nine.